Hey guys, it's Courtney and I'm back here with another video for Simon Hurley Create and today we're going to be playing with lots and lots of inks and talking about lots and lots of things. So I know there's been a lot of questions about what the Simon Hurley Create inks are and everybody thinks, you know, that they're very similar to Distress inks and they are in the fact that they blend well. However, they don't stamp anything like Distress inks and if you guys have crafted for a while, you probably have Distress inks in your stash and you know that you can't stamp with them because that's what you get. If you stamp with the Simon Hurley Create inks, they are more of a traditional dye ink in that you get a great stamped impression even with solid stamps. So we're going to move on to ink blending now. And for this first panel, the easiest thing to do is to color is to ink blend with like colors in the same color family. So I'm going to be using Over the Moon, Slippery When Wet, and Guppy, which is one of the new colors. And I'm starting off with the lightest yellow, I guess you could say. Well, they're all yellow and Guppy is kind of has a little bit of a tint of orange. And I'm just working towards the top of the paper. Then I'll bring in Over the Moon, which is kind of in between the two. And then I'll finish off with the Guppy. And I'm kind of just slowly building up my color. I'm using ink blending brushes, but you can use a regular ink blending tool. Just keep in mind that it tends to hold a lot more ink than the brushes. So sometimes you get those in indentation, not indentations, but impressions from your ink blending tool on your paper if you go in a little too heavy handed. So I'm working on the guppy now, and this is on the bottom or the top, whatever you want it to be, of the card panel. And then I'm going to kind of work in reverse. I'm slowly building up my color. That way I can continue to add more. If you go in with a real heavy hand, there's no blending that out and there's no adding any more if you want to. So I always like to slowly build up the color. So like I said, working with light colors, you are guaranteed to get these to blend nicely. And you can see that once we're done, we have a nice gradient. Now, the next way, easy way to remember what colors blend with what is to think of the rainbow. Here we have rainbow colors. So we are going to create an ink blended panel with all of the colors of the rainbow. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did for the first one. I'm going to go in with ink blending brushes and I'm going to slowly build up my color. I'm going to work from the top of the panel down to the bottom and then I'm going to work my way back up. You'll also notice that I'm working on a scrap piece of paper. And if you watch my videos before, you'll notice that I often do when I'm doing my ink blending. Couple of reasons for this. Number one <laughs> is because I found it best to, when I'm recording and when I'm filming, to work on this self-healing cutting mat. It's super cheap and it doesn't get a glare. And so I didn't wanna have to keep switching my mats around. It was easy just to pull out a scrap piece of paper. But I also have a glass media mat and all of that, which I love working on. However, when I'm doing ink blending, especially when I'm using multiple colors like this, I notice that as I'm ink blending, I'm picking up the color with whatever tool I'm using, whether it be a brush or ink blending tool, I'm picking up the color that's already sitting on my mat from the color I used before. So unless you want to keep wiping off your mat between each and every color, more than likely you're going to grab that color that's left behind and bring it onto your card and leave it in areas that you probably don't want it to be. So it's best for me if I just work on a scrap piece of paper. Now this is just printer paper. I literally have my printer sitting right next to me and I grab a piece as I need to. Typically I'll reuse them several times. In videos, not so much because you guys can't see what I'm doing if I do that. So here I am, I got all the way to the bottom of the card and now I'm working my way back up and you'll see that once I work my way back up, I'm only concentrating on two colors at a time. So I'm making sure that green and the blue blend together nicely before putting away that blue and now bringing in the yellow and making sure that the green and yellow blend nicely together and doing the same thing all the way to the top. And you can see that I didn't go heavy handed on this. I wanted this to be more of a pastel -y look. So I didn't add a ton of ink. So that's what's great about the dye inks is you can control how much ink you put on. Where it would like to stress oxides being they're more of a hybrid ink, it's either you go bold or go nothing. So I like the fact that I have a little bit more control with the dye inks. 
Now let's take a look at a little bit of color theory, very basic color theory. So complementary colors are directly across from themselves, from each other on the color wheel. The You can see it's all in rainbow order and the primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. These mean that no matter what you blend together, you're never gonna make red, you're never gonna make blue, and you're never gonna make yellow, but you can make all the colors in between. So we're gonna take a red and a yellow, and in between the red and the yellow on the color wheel is orange, and all different shades of orange, depending on how much red, how much yellow you add, and how dark they are. So we're gonna kinda test this out and mix these two colors together, and hopefully get a gradient with three colors, even though we're only using two. So I am using B-Sting on the top of my card panel, and you can see that I'm slowly building up the color, but I'm getting pretty dark towards the top because I, like I said, I want this to be more of a gradient. So I'm gonna go from a really dark red, kind of to a lighter red, and then it's gonna kind of switch to an orange and then to the yellow. So once I have a base layer down of the red, and I will go back and add more, I'm gonna switch it around, and this time I am using Over the Moon, which is the yellow. And I accidentally grabbed the wrong ink blending brush. <laughs> so I have a little bit of something mixed in there. I'm not even sure which one I grabbed, but I had a little bit of ink left over, so ignore that one corner there because that's not true to color. <laughs> and I'm just gonna kind of work this color up until I'm coming close to the red. Then I'm gonna go back with the red and I'm gonna start blending that down towards the yellow. And I'll kind of go back and forth because I don't wanna to add too much color at once. I wanna make sure that they blend and not overlap. Keep in mind these are dye inks. These are not hybrid and they are not pigment, so they are not opaque. They are transparent, which means they're going to mix well together where if you have more of a pigment or a hybrid, they kind of just cover each other up. These don't, they'll blend. So you can see that I'm left off with orange in the middle, just like the color wheel said. <laughs> so next we're gonna talk about complementary colors, and these are right across from each other on the color wheel, but these do not go together. They go together in the fact that they look good. So if you have a blue flower and an orange flower, it's gonna look nice, but blue and orange will not mix. And I'm not making a card out of this because quite honestly, it's gonna look like a mess. But I just wanted to show you what it looks like when you blend complementary colors. So I put down a little bit of the Remember Me, which is the blue, and then I'm gonna bring in the traffic cone, and I'm gonna blend that up into the blue, and you can see that I'm getting a muddy mess. I'm gonna add a little bit more of that blue, and I'm getting even more of a muddy mess. That does not look pretty. <laughs> Complementary colors don't go. So finally, we're gonna talk about secondary colors, and the secondary colors is what you get when you mix two primary colors. So kind of just like we did with the orange, mixing the red and the yellow, we're gonna make a whole rainbow with just three colors, but we're gonna get six colors out of it. So again, I'm starting off the bee sting on the top, and next, I'm not gonna add an orange, I'm gonna go right to the over the moon, which is the yellow. And I'm kinda just spacing them out at this point because I'm not sure how much space I need for each color. So I'm just adding a little bit of color for now and then I'll worry about blending them later because I'm just not sure how much room I'm gonna need for each one. Next, I'm gonna skip the green again because the green is a secondary color and I'm gonna go right in with the Remember Me, which is that blue, another primary color, and I'm gonna add that to the bottom. Once I have those colors down, then I can worry about blending them. Now, once I mix that blue and that yellow, I'm going to get my green. So I don't have to have a green ink that goes well with this, or maybe I'm just too lazy to bring it out. I don't need it, I only need three colors to make six. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of that yellow and blend that with the blue and make that green. Gonna go back to that red and yellow now, the two primary colors, and I want this to create orange in the middle, which you'll see that I'll get a variation of orange. And depending on how dark my red is and how bright my yellow is, you may get a different variation of orange each time. Now, we know that the rainbow has purple in it, but we don't have purple, and I don't want to bring in a purple ink pad. But remember, you don't have to mix just the red and the yellow. You can mix the red and the blue because they are both primary colors. So in order to make my purple, I'm going to bring back out my color wheel, 
check to see where my primary colors are and notice that the blue and the red can also be mixed together. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of that red right there in the lower left hand corner or the lower right hand corner rather and create my purple. And there we have the rainbow. So now that my, all my card panels are done, we're gonna make these into cards. I also wanted to mention that Simon Hurley Create inks are also water reactive. So I sprinkled on a little water, dab that up with a paper towel, and for the next panel, I'm gonna use some shimmer spray. Sprinkle that on, dab that up with a paper towel, and I was going to do that with the next panel. However, this is disaster number one. Wait for it, here we go. I didn't put the top on when I went to grab it and now I have a shimmery work surface. I have a shimmery table. I have shimmery everything. I just loaded everything in the sink, went through about a half a roll of paper towels <laughs> and a whole lot of Lysol wipes, but I finally got it cleaned up. But we're gonna skip that card panel and move on to this yellow one. I'm gonna bring out one of the newer stencils from Simon Hurley. This is called the Lou, and I sprayed a little pixie dust or pixie spray on it just to get that stuck down to my card panel. That way I don't have to tape it down and it won't shift around as I'm adding my ink. Now, remember, yellow and red make orange. So I have kind of a light yellow going on, so I'm gonna bring in rosy cheeks, which is pink, close enough to red, and I'm gonna go directly over my stencil. And you can see that I'm concentrating my darkest color in the upper left-hand corner and kind of just blending that out. I'm not really worried about adding any ink to the bottom. I'm just kind of letting whatever ink is on my brush kind of fade out. And because yellow and pink, in this case, make orange, my background is not going to have any pink on it. It's going to be orange. So next we're gonna go ahead and assemble our cards and I made these super, super simple. I am gonna be using the Encouraging Words stamp set and this is also new by Simon Hurley and I absolutely love, love, love these sentiments. They're all handwritten by Simon and I just love them. And I am gonna bring out my Misty because a lot of these, these are the first time I'm stamping them and they're huge. Some of these sentiments are huge. So I went ahead and lined that up in the lower right hand corner and I had a cat hair and for some reason I just was struggling getting this little cat hair off my stamp. And for those pet owners, you know what it looks like when you stamp a large sentiment like this and you have a pet hair on the stamp that you didn't notice. So I'm trying to avoid that. <laughs> I went ahead and stamped this out twice with the scrapbook.com hybrid black ink. This is a really nice bold black ink. These are really huge sentiments and they're pretty solid. So more than likely, you're probably gonna have to stamp them twice anyway. Then I went ahead and adhered this down to an A2 size note card. And I don't think I mentioned before, but all of these are blended on stark white cardstock by Simon Hurley. It's a great, great cardstock for ink blending, stamping, coloring, everything. And it's heavyweight. So to finish off this card, I used a few drops of my Liquid Pearls, which I have had in my stash for probably six or seven years, and they're still good, and I still love them, and I just added a few of those around the sentiment. For the next card, I went ahead and cut down my panel almost in half, or well, a little bit more than half. I didn't really measure, to be honest with you. I just took a chunk of it off. And I also took a teeny tiny strip of black cardstock as well. And this will just kind of act as my border. I took my white card base and adhered my rainbow strip there to the top. This will be a landscape card. And then I adhered that little strip of the black card stock directly below it. And that way it will kind of separate the two pieces from the rainbow to the white card base itself. And then I went ahead and stamped out the sentiment again using my Misty. I didn't leave myself quite enough room. I probably should have trimmed this panel down just a little bit more, but it is what it is. I went ahead and stamped that out twice. And then I just took a black pen just to kind of fill in any areas that didn't stamp well because my paper, the black paper is raised up a little bit. So I didn't get a great impression, but I could easily fix that with a pen. So for my final card, I did go ahead and die cut this down with a stitched rectangle die. And I'm gonna go ahead and use another one of the sentiments from the stamp set. Again, I just centered this, 
had another cat hair on this one. I'm not sure where all these cat hairs are coming from. These cats are not even in the craft room today, but it must be in the air. So I went ahead again, stamped this twice with that hybrid ink by scrapbook.com right there in the center of my card panel. And then I am going to layer this onto a piece of black card stock that is cut just a teeny tiny bit larger than my panel and smaller than my card base itself. I like to layer everything with black. Even if it's just a teeny tiny bit of it showing, it will really make your card panel pop off your card base. So that is it for me today, guys. I hope that was helpful. I hope you learned a few things about basic color theory, a few tips and tricks about ink blending, and certainly more information about the Simon Hurley Create dye inks. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and have a great day.